Now, even though the Canon R100 is a budget-friendly camera, don't let the affordable price fool you because this camera is more than capable of giving you beautiful cinematic video. So there's six things that you're gonna have to get familiar with and eventually master to get the most out of your camera. The beautiful thing is, is once you learn these things, it's pretty much gonna work the same on any camera. So the first thing is called FPS, frames per second. So to simplify the idea, basically it's like this. Imagine you have a flip book, you know, the little flip animations. When uh, you, you were a kid, you flip it and, it and and the little stick figure moves around or whatever. So let's say it takes a second to flip. 24 FPS, it basically means you got 24 pages in that flip book. 30 FPS, 30 frames per second, that means you got 30 pages in that flip book. 60 FPS, 60 pages, 120, 120 pages, etc. Most of the footage that you see and what people quote unquote call cinematic is gonna be shot at 24 frames per second. So when you set your camera at 24 frames per second, it's gonna give you natural look and motion blur, which is the closest to what we see with our eyes. Some people like to shoot at 30 frames per second, but it looks a little weird. It'll look like a soap opera, one of them old British movies you used to see on PBS when you were a kid. Doesn't look right. So 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, that's gonna be for slow motion. But for most normal footage, you're gonna to wanna to shoot at 24 frames per second. It's hot up in here. All right, the next thing we need to talk about is shutter speed. So there's just a few things you need to know about shutter speed. Firstly, shutter speed is different for photography than it is for video. For video, all you really need to know is something called the 180 degree shutter rule. And all that means is that whatever you set your frame rate at, your shutter speed needs to be double. So for example, let's say you set your frame rate at 24 frames per second, then your shutter speed needs to be 48 or the closest number to that that your camera allows. Let's say you're shooting for slow motion at 60 frames per second, then your shutter speed it needs to be 120. Let's say you're doing extreme slow motion at 120 frames per second. Then your shutter speed is going to be set at 240. Let's say you're doing super duper slow motion at 240 frames per second. Then your shutter speed is going to be set at 480. You get the picture, right? Good. And the next thing we're going to talk about is white balance. So white balance is pretty simple. It has to do with something called color temperature. So let's say, for example, one of the light bulbs goes out in your house and you go to replace it. Once you get to the hardware store, you're going to notice that they have different color temperature of lights. So for instance, they're going to have some that are going to be daylight. They're gonna have some that are gonna be cool light. They're gonna have some that are gonna be tungsten. And all these different colors give off a different color cast. So adjusting the white balance allows you to change the dynamics of your camera so that it can adjust the colors depending on the type of light that you're using. So for instance, in the studio right now, I have the camera set at 5400 Kelvin and I have the light that I'm using also set at 5400 Kelvin. That way I make sure that they match. I like to start at 5400 Kelvin and then from there, adjust up or down as I need. Now, if you're in a place where you can't manipulate the light, you can't control the light, let's say you're shooting outdoors or something like that, then you can set your camera to auto white balance and let the camera do it for you. With this, you're gonna get mixed results. Sometimes it's pretty good, but personally, I like to have control over it myself and set it at a constant Kelvin temperature so I don't get any fluctuations. So that's your white balance. All right, so next we have aperture. So your aperture is basically the little hole in the front of your lens and the lower the number, the wider open that it is. So for example, if your maximum aperture on your lens is 1.8, that means that when your aperture is set at 1.8, your lens is fully open. And if you start to set it higher than that at f2 or f3 or f4, the blades on your lens, they start to close up. They start to get smaller. So the aperture is gonna control how much light is coming into your lens and therefore hitting the sensor. So it's gonna be part of the equation for you to set your exposure. I like to shoot wide open most of the time because it gives you that blurry background called shallow depth of field but sometimes you don't want that so what you're going to do is you're going to make your f-stop higher so for example let's say i'm trying to get what's called an establishing shot and i want to get the background in focus and in that point i have to set the aperture higher so that it doesn't blur out the background Ooh. It's hot around here. So we're pretty much almost done now. It hasn't been too hard, right? There's only two more things we're gonna go over. The first one is called ISO. And all that is, is a setting that determines how sensitive your camera is to light. So if your ISO is too low, your image is gonna be underexposed, it's gonna be too dark. And if your ISO is set too high, your image is gonna be overexposed. It's gonna be blown out in the highlights. So you basically have to try to expose the best in camera so that you don't have to mess with it too much once you get it to the computer. If you're trying to vlog or move around or the sun is going behind the clouds and it's changing, then 
then what you're gonna wanna do is put it on auto ISO. And what that's gonna do is, as the light changes, it's gonna adjust your ISO for you. You can get mixed results with that. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. And that brings me to another point. Sometimes your ISO is at the lowest possible amount that it can go, and there's still too much light. So for example, when I first got my camera, and I had read that the ISO has to do with light sensitivity, so I turned the ISO all the way down, but still, I was completely blown out. My face was completely white, it just didn't look right. So I was like, man, what's wrong with this camera? I got it on the lowest ISO, but I still look completely white. There's too much light out here. Later on, I found out that what you have to do when you shoot outside and there's too much light, you have to get an ND filter, which is basically like sunglasses for your camera lens. So that's pretty much it, except for one last thing, which is your picture profile. You can set your picture profile to standard, and what that's gonna do is gonna give you a decent image straight out of the camera, you don't have to really mess with it. You can also use something called LUTs. LUTs are lookup tables. So it's like a preset, once you apply it to your footage, it's gonna automatically give you a certain look. So there's all types of different creative LUTs that you can use that are gonna do an automatic color grade for you. I hope you learned something from that. If you did, please hit the like button. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss future videos. And if you're interested in picking up my LUT pack, you can get it for 15 bucks off of my website, fulancreative.com. And keep in mind that the settings that we discussed in this video are a prerequisite for you to get that beautiful cinematic footage. But the next thing that you have to work on is your lighting. And that's why I highly suggest that you watch this video next where I teach you exactly how I light my videos. I appreciate you watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. It's Fulan Creative, and I'm out. Peace.